Generation 2 introduced a new feature to the world of Pokemon. Shiny Pokemon. You might ask yourself that, hey, Generation 1 games have shiny Pokemon. That's not true. Generation 2 was not the first games to introduce them. You are correct, but they don't show up as shinies in your game. However, you have that small slim of chance to actually transfer that over to the other games and to see whether or not you actually have a shiny Pokemon with you from Generation 1. But to physically see a shiny Pokemon with your own eyes, this is where Generation 2 comes into play. A feature that has no advantage in the competitive grand scheme of things, but introduced a new hobby to many players today. Shiny hunting. Over the years, many fans spend countless hours hunting down these different variations of Pokemon. Almost every generation introducing new ways to shiny hunt, whether for the good or for the worse for the player. You cannot deny that there is an outstanding fanbase and community that are dedicated to pushing one's limit to collect shiny Pokemon. Regardless of the goal of it being a shiny living dex or just to have a general shiny because you think it looks cool, it's interesting to see the shiny odds being tweaked over the years. Let's take a look at Diamond and Pearl and take a look at today's Sword and Shield. Because shiny hunting resulted in so much time commitment, some players resorted to cheating methods to obtain them. It is defeating the purpose the feature gave to players, but whichever your point of view remains, it comes down to a personal preference of how you as a player decide and how you want to obtain things in the game. Whether it's legitimate or not, but if we take the term exploit, does it fall under legitimacy or not? Let's take a look at it this way. Exploits in video games are done and committed by players that were originally not meant to be played in that regard to begin with, right? But when we take a look at what's available to a player playing a game, Without a cheating device, a game's exploit is technically offering a method in order to complete a certain action. Many people can't afford nor believe in the use of cheating methods to obtain things in their games, but if an exploit is available due to buggy programming, you can use that to your advantage without feeling the need to completely miss out on the objective that you set yourself to achieve. It's a personal preference of how you view this analogy. If an exploit exists, it's fine to use it because it's the coding that is at fault. Take it as you will, but over the years Pokemon fans have discovered unique ways to exploit certain things in Pokemon games, especially when it comes down to finding shiny Pokemon. November 21st, 2003. Introducing the next generation of Pokemon, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, alongside Emerald in 2004. One of the newest features that makes the return from Pokemon Crystal is the Battle Tower, which then gets expanded to an all-time fan favorite of the Battle Frontier with the release of Emerald. However, the Battle Tower is the only facility that we will be focusing on, primarily in Ruby and Sapphire. As you progress through the Battle Tower and collect wins, there is a chance that a trainer will have a shiny Pokemon on their team. When that happens, and you can confirm that the shiny has been sent out either as the second or third Pokemon on the trainer's team, then the next step would be to lose to the trainer. The reason why the shiny can't be in the first slot is because of the rematch Roamer glitch that will be performed later, the Roamer Lottie twin that will take up the first slot. Upon losing to the trainer, the following prerequisites need to be met in order to successfully catch the shiny that you just found. Otherwise, you will have to hunt it again. The game mode needs to be on set. You cannot encounter a wild Pokemon and you cannot encounter a trainer battle. Grab a Pokemon with mean look and that it's at least level 40. The reason why we use a level 40 Pokemon is to allow you to 100% encounter one of the Lottie Twins depending on your game in the wild. The route above Slayport City is typically the best place to encounter the Legendary, and once you encounter it, you are going to want to mean look it right away, as it will try to escape on the first turn. Make sure your Pokemon is faster, otherwise it will run away. When it's defeated, the next Pokemon from the trainer that you lost against will send out the Pokemon that beat you in the battle. You want to mean luck again, so that Pokemon doesn't escape either, and defeat it. The shiny Pokemon should be the last one remaining, or it could have been the second slot from the trainer's party. Again, it all depends on what beat you during the fight in the battle tower. You might want to mean luck that, just in case it runs away, which it will, so you definitely want to mean luck. 
and weaken it down to catch it unless you have a master ball ready to go. And there you go. You have legitimately exploited a glitch in Ruby and Sapphire to obtain a competitive ready, shiny Pokemon. Congrats. The question remains of how this was discovered. Every Pokemon needs a trainer ID to prevent any glitches with the name, moves, etc. But otherwise, you will just be dealing with a bad egg, which are typically not a good sign for your game. A trainer ID is issued onto a Pokemon as soon as you catch it, or obtain it through Mystery Gift. Gifted Pokemon, in other words, being handed one. The Battle Tower has trainer IDs on all the Pokemon used in the facility. The ID almost matches yours, meaning it's safe to catch and claim ownership of the shiny. This was a statement made by Metacry, a researcher if you will in Gen 3 mechanics. The information ultimately can be found in Glitch City Laboratory archives. There you can see the sequence of events that occurred that led up to this discovery. Through the early research that I tried doing to ensure that there were some early users that first documented this discovery, there were two users that documented the experience of their hunts, Lettuce and Primal. Soon after attention was brought to the discovery of this glitch, a few other users became inspired and started the hunt themselves in hopes of obtaining a legitimate shiny, competitive ready, and ready to go. Pokemon fans are the peak of when it comes down to discovering and going in-depth into researching various things. These games are super interesting when explored properly, whether it's new methods or even new breakthroughs of some kind, but you cannot deny the fact that the passionate fans really shape the future of the community. I was astonished when I found out about this method, so I decided to share it with you all as I haven't really seen anyone bring it up all too much in discussions amongst fans themselves. But perhaps there are other things out there that need to shed of light, but I guess we could save that for another time.